I feel like either crying or clapping at that. <laughs> that was beautiful. If you don't know, if you're not familiar with Unity Village, it's our world headquarters just outside of Kansas City, and they put together some awesome uh, videos and booklets all the time that you can check out their website, unity.org, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later today. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who've tuned in today and have come into the building today to be with us to celebrate Pride. I want to welcome Kim Char Meredith, as you know, is our music director, also our creative director. <laughs> And my friend, <clears throat> friend Carol Gadbaugh is here. She has not only served as our board president, but she's our head prayer chaplain. So if you need prayer, <clears throat> see Carol. Yeah, thanks, you guys. And it's really our honor today at Unity in Naperville to be celebrating Pride Month with our LGBTQ plus community. And it's an opportunity for us to just affirm what Unity has always been, hopefully. I honestly can't say way back in when, more history there to look up, right, as far as the Fillmores go, but that we've been an ally for the LGBTQ plus community. And um, it's just our, another opportunity for us to support um, and to educate and to tie it together with spirituality today so that we can see how we are one family in our diversity. And hopefully uh, we'll have some chance for you to learn something new and also consider if there's anything in our own consciousness that needs to be revealed and released um, and just how we can move forward as one in one spirit. So I'm actually going to ask Carol to start today uh, and she's going to share a little bit with us about Pride Month. I can't help but think, Kitty, that Myrtle, Phil, Myrtle Fillmore would only have love yes. and see the God in everyone. It's divine love, love. love everybody. So if we go back to the 1960s, what did it look like if you were a gay person? Men and women in same-sex relationships had to hide and be very private. The idea of marriage was not even on the horizon, and your life with your significant other would most certainly not be a part of the conversation at the water cooler, the family table, or during a night out with friends. On June 28, 1969, in New York City, a squad of police decided to shut down a local bar, the Stonewall Inn. That was a place where gay people gathered. It was their safe place, the one place they could be themselves. The police targeted drag queens and cross-dressers and began making arrests. There was a large crowd gathering outside, and one girl turned to the crowd and said, why don't you do something? And for the first time, with power in numbers, the Stonewall clientele fought back. This went on for weeks, with many beatings and arrests. These riots are widely considered the events that became the foundation of the gay liberation movement. A year later, the first gay pride parade took place in Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco to mark this anniversary. It was time, and the need was strong, to have the freedom to live lives in a meaningful way and to have respect and not fear in your life. In 2019, they established a monument on the site of the Stonewall Inn celebrating the 50th anniversary. The New York Police Commissioner gave a formal apology for the actions of those officers 50 years later. And much has happened in those 50 years, and thanks to many people working hard behind the scenes, laws have been changed and much progress made. And yet, well, there is an elderly couple, Alice and Vivian, two 90-year-old women who actually got married when it became legal. They had been together for 72 years. The diamond ring sparkled brightly on their gnarled hands, as they sat in their wheelchairs. And yet, even today, 44 trans people were killed in 2022, and there are those, to take, those, are, there are those working behind the scenes to take away our freedoms that it took so long to gain. No one wants to go back to a life of hiding, to have to, create, to cross straight lines to get married, to live in fear once again. Everybody, has a need to be valued, seen, respected, and to live a life in equality. 
Kim Shar, tell us a little more about these rights. Well, I just want to add to what you were sharing because we were definitely one of those couples who had to cross state lines. So we, even after, uh, Cindy was getting ready to retire, um, but in order to even qualify for spousal benefits or, or survivor benefits, we had to be married, couldn't do it here. So we ended up going to Iowa. So thank goodness Iowa was there. But yeah, I know that's things that a lot of people don't think about in order to just plan and live your life as a family. So these things are important to the day by day and to our hearts, you know? And as we continue looking at, at Pride this morning, I know there are a lot of things that might feel unfamiliar hearing about Stonewall, perhaps, mm -hmm. hearing about friends crossing state lines, and even this acronym that pops up a lot during Pride, L-G-B-T-Q-I-A, plus, <laughs> plus, it's like, and, you may or may not be familiar with what that is, so we'll just take a minute or so to talk about that and just and go over those terms that are incorporated into that acronym. So again, go ahead, you can start that, uh, Cindy. The community is big and diverse in and of itself, right? So L stands for lesbian. Those are essentially women with a significant attraction to the same gender, women who are attracted to women. Gay, we use it as a broader term for the entire community, but quite typically it's used talking about men attracted to men. Bisexual are those who are attracted to more than one sex or gender. By the way, not necessarily at the same time. And that, okay, get that in. Transgendered is an umbrella term that we have for those um, whose gender expression doesn't, is not congruent with the sex assigned at birth. Queer is, you know what? It's often been used as a derogatory term, but we've reclaimed it, right? Mm -hmm. And said, this is who we are, and a lot of times it's used in a political context. Intersex, those born with reproductive uh, or sexual anatomy that doesn't fit the sex binary of male or female. There's asexual, that's the A, and there's those with no sexual attraction at all. That doesn't mean they're not in loving relationships or anything, but it's not their thing, asexual. And then there's the plus, because it goes on and on and on. Because as the community has organized and grown, it's, it's being conscious about being more inclusive in and of itself, mm -hmm. right? And I'm gonna briefly stop and go back to transgendered, and maybe you can interject here. Yes. Because that doesn't have to do with sexual orientation necessarily, right? There we there. go. Thank so you. let's talk about transgender. Just, just briefly. Yes. So um, imagine being born in a body that we classify as female, but within your being, you identify as male. That's an example of a transgender person. So um, don't assume just by looking at them that this is a she or a he. What we want to do at this point is get familiar with the pronouns. And this has become acceptable now for us to be able to um, ask someone, what pronoun should I use for you? So I don't know how many of you are on Zoom. Anybody out there on Zoom? Occasionally now you will see people putting their name at, at the bottom of their picture uh, that they're speaking from, uh, but they're also putting in parentheses their pronouns. So think about that the next time that you're in some kind of a gathering, especially people that you haven't met yet, and actually, we're going to give you a chance to do this here in the room today because you don't know each other that well. This is a good, safe place for you to practice that. What, what pronouns should I use for you? And you should know your own pronouns. So if you present in your identity as female, then you might say uh, she or hers um, or her. And if you're male, it might be he or him or his. And there are those who don't really relate to the binary they might be referred to as non-binary as far as their identification goes, and they um, would prefer to be called they or them. Look it up in Shakespeare. He, he used the word they to refer to individuals. So it's been around for a while. We just need to get used to doing it because my heart's desire is to normalize the sexual orientation spectrum. Normalize the entire spectrum 
in our generation, my generation, we are starting to see that it's a broad spectrum of diversity. And we probably won't get to all the descriptions here today. But there is a spectrum. It's not one right way. And so this is an opportunity for us to start to realize whatever is right for you, that your heart feels is true for you, is true, and it deserves respect. So do you want to talk a little bit about um, how this diversity, this rainbow that we're used to seeing in Pride Month, how it has expressed itself? Yes. Uh, but before we do that, were we going to do an exercise with the he, her thing? Because... At the end. At the end. That's, I have to say, that's not always easy for me because someone says they, there, and I get confused. They, theirs. But that's just because I'm not used to it, right? I'm not familiar with it. But right. we will go practice, to that later. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, Yes. But going back to this idea of the rainbow, um, and that, that picture resonates so deeply, so profoundly with the LGBTQ plus community that they've adopted it as a symbol, right? We've seen these, these pride flags, these rainbow flags all over the place, quite, and a lot of them in June go hanging up in the window and, and out in front of the house. And that just represents that diversity even within the community, right? It's bringing awareness to the diversity. And you know what? It's about celebration too. Tell me you can't look, you can't look at a rainbow flag and not be happy. <laughs> and so, and that flag, um, even as the community has uh, grown and evolved, the flag has evolved too. You see that insert flag, that inset flag there? They added this, this chevron, this triangular thing, to be more inclusive even. If you'll notice the colors of black and brown, that's to kind of bring attention and recognize the marginalized people of color within our community. If you look at the pink, blue, and the white, that's to bring attention to our transgendered community members. So yeah, we're ever evolving, but you know what? Always colorful, for sure, <laughs> right? Always colorful. <laughs> but, but let's, we're gonna consider this idea of the symbol of the rainbow a lot more this morning. Carol? And can I just interrupt for a minute? Yeah. How many of you have walked in our front door and seen a rainbow flag uh, decal in the window? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, you want to talk about I that? Think, yeah, I actually put, put a slide up there because, you know, there's um, an organization called Naper Pride, naperpride.org. Their website is there. And they created a decal. Do you like that? And they incorporated the N for Naperville, but they took all those colors of the pride flag and incorporated that. And the reason it's in our window is because it indicates this is a safe place. That's right. This is a welcoming place. So keep your eyes open for that. I know it's a, it's a sticky decal, and it actually fell off once, and someone turned it upside down and, and with the U. It looks like <laughs> <That> was <laughs> unity. <laughs> but no, it should be the other way around to let the, our friends in Naperville know this is a safe place. So. Although hanging upside down, it works too. It works that way too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, there's so much equation. Uh, uh, never mind. Don't get me started. Okay, I can go off on that one for a whole message. And so we've all had the wonderful experience on a cloudy, thunderstormy day, and we're outside, and. All of a sudden, the sun breaks through and it, it shines its bright light into the rain, and the rain creates a prism that diffracts that light so that we have the wonderful experience of seeing a beautiful rainbow in the sky. And that is a miracle of seeing that natural, whole, pure light of the sun turning into the refraction and the colors expressed in our rainbow. And rainbows, it isn't much of a, a leap to go from the meta, into the metaphysical meaning behind a rainbow since experiencing one is such a metaphysical experience for many people. The divine light of God is undifferentiated. So I say again, the divine light of God is undifferentiated. Pure white light. The divine light shines upon everyone equally as one light flowing to all. And from the one light comes many colors, which is the infinite expression of spirit. The experience of colors happens through our own prism of perception, which allows us to see the unique colors in the way that each is creating our own pattern in the colorful tapestry that is life. 
The prism that we see through allows us to see beauty and diversity. The one light shining upon us all equally is always there, flowing through that prism mm -hmm. and taking us back to the oneness and the unity, which is at the center of our being. Our purpose as spiritual beings is to be aware of our own color and to appreciate the expression of all the colors expressed around us. I'm orange. I'm orange. I, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm Good blue. To I'm <laughs> and to appreciate the variety. What would we be without orange? That's right. Or teal. I personally am a fan of teal. <laughs> so, ushers, can you come forward? Ushers? We've got them. Diane and Nicole, you want to come up here for a minute? We have a little something for you to help you taste the rainbow. We, we, had, we had a little blip of a song here, and while they're passing out the rainbow, say, I don't know what it's like to be you. You don't know what it's like to be me. But if we're all the same in different kinds of ways, can you, can you relate? Look at you guys. That's a spontaneous. Beautiful, yeah. Take two, there's plenty, you guys, in case you're- Taste a, the rainbow. In case you're a Skittles fan. <laughs> so that's why I'm telling you guys, it's fun to watch online, but look, you missed Skittles today, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just an opportunity for us. We know that the Spirit of God is everywhere present, expressing as each one of us uniquely, and we don't always know that. We don't always know that about ourselves, and we don't, it's a lot easier to not know that about other people, because as soon as we look out through our own prism of perception, if that prism is cloudy, then we're going to miss out on seeing the beautiful diversity of God. And that prism gets cloudy in a lot of different ways. You know how a prism has facets, you know, little edges that help to reveal the different colors. Those facets in, within ourselves as a metaphor get formed throughout our life. Think about who's helped form your perceptions. Think about it. We, it starts in our family. So we, we have to look back and see what did my family raise me to believe about those who are different. My peers in school, the education that I got, maybe even the laws on the books might tell us something about our perception or help to form that perception. And that cloudiness, you know, that error thinking is what occludes our divine perception, our ability to see the truth. It's very easy uh, in this country. You know, we live in a metropolitan area with a lot of diversity here in the Chicago area. Um, I was raised in Peoria, not a very big town. I spent some time in my life living in Brookings, Oregon, an even smaller town of about 2,000 people. And um, I'm not going to assume that every small town is like this, but you have a harder chance living in smaller cities where the diversity, there's, you're limited to the number of people that are there in town. And anyone who's different learns how to hide that if possible. Uh, and so that's where it gets started early in our age. If we're living in an area that doesn't have a variety, then we just let our, our parents and our experiences tell us that there's only one way to be. And on the sexual orientation spectrum, we think straight is the only way to be. So we grow up thinking that way, and if we manage to get out of town, then we discover that there's a whole lot of other people out there unlike us. The ego fears what's different. It judges what's different. And so this is an opportunity for us to check in and just see, where did I come from? What did I carry with me? And what is real? And right here in front of me, we cannot deny what is real and right here in front of us. We can only question our view of that. So let's just check in and see if our prison is, uh, or our prism of perception actually becomes a prison for us. And I think this is why Jesus said what he said in the book of uh, Matthew chapter six up here on the screen. He said that the eye, the perception, is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? What are we missing? How much of God's infinite goodness and potential are we missing if our prism is a prison, if it's cloudy? So our work here is to really clean up that prism 
so that we can see more clearly. I think, was it Carol that brought to our attention the William Blake quote? Yes. yes, up here on the screen, I love this. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is. Infinite, infinite. So we, we have some work to do to polish our prism, to teach our ego that it needs to take a backseat to our higher sense, our higher self, the Christ within, the God within, that sees clearly and is the expression of all these unique, diverse beings on the planet. We have to go in and search for that unconscious bias within ourself, and we have to become aware that there is a problem if not around the world, then definitely in our country, of what needs to be revealed and that we get educated about it, about what's real, which is why we're doing what we're doing here at Unity on this Sunday morning, is giving us a chance to open up that lens and see more clearly. Can I interject something? Please. Too? Because, and it's okay if it's taken some time for us to even be aware of our own unconscious bias or what we've learned or what we've been taught. You know, it, it makes me think, like sometimes I'll walk around all day, and I've got my glasses on, and then like, I'm not seeing clearly. And it's like, because I have a tendency to handle a lot and touch it, do this with my fingers. But then when I stop and I get the little cloth and I clean it, boy, I see a lot more clearly. And I hadn't realized, boy, that was not clear earlier. So to me, it feels like the same thing, this idea yeah. of once we become conscious, I'm not seeing clearly. Are we willing to kind of take that polishing cloth and do what needs to be done so we can rectify yes. our own vision, our sight? And that's what I guess this polishing the prison yes. idea is. I mean, is. I, I think any good therapist would tell us the first step is becoming aware of what's going on within yourself. Yeah, and that's what our perception is, is an awareness of what we believe, what's of truth, of spirit, and what needs to be released and let go. So, my darlings from Unity in Naperville, I'm going to remind you of something that we did together. You may not have been here at the time, but early on in our inception, we established values for our congregation. And two of them I want to point out to you today, one of which is the value of open-mindedness. So this open-mindedness was, we defined it. We defined what it is. We talked about um, how or why it is a value to us. One of the things we talked about is that it's our willingness to entertain new ideas, to be willing to look with a broader vision. That's what open-mindedness is. It's about um, supporting our spiritual growth by seeing and experiencing our own divine wholeness and assuming that all those we look at are also whole. And that's another one of our values we'll talk about in a minute. But when we use our power of, or our, our value of open-mindedness, we are opening to the spirit present in all of us, expressing uniquely. So up here on, um, let's, yeah, next screen there. The challenging of beliefs. That's one of the ways that this congregation has chosen to express it, to challenge our beliefs through a variety of ideas that support spiritual growth and to offer alternative perspectives as we explore spiritual principles. And this final slide here is our affirmation of open-mindedness. So I'm going to ask you to say it together with me. I am flexible when presented with new or uncomfortable ideas. I listen and consider the possibilities from different perspectives. I respect the opinions of others. Great. And the other one today that we want to focus on is our value of wholeness, which is basically accepting the fact that we are all whole to begin with because we are all spiritual beings. So we are all perfect and complete as we are before we ever came into the body. And that wholeness is something that gives us a sense of oneness with each other. There's only one presence here, right? And also that it's an opportunity for us to reveal that wholeness by revealing our divine potential from within out. So let's make this affirmation for our wholeness together. I participate in consciousness expanding activities such as inward exploration, study and discussion. I view everything as a growth opportunity and I live the truth that I know. So thank you for choosing those values and just reminding you this is an opportunity to express them. I live the truth that I know. I live the truth that I know. And as we each live that truth that we, of who we are and what we are, 
that, we sang the song earlier, that is bringing heaven down. Yeah. Down right here into our experience as we live our truth. Mm. So as we support the LGBTQ plus community as an ally, we hear that word a lot, right? We are bringing heaven down. And being an ally means to, a blanket way of putting it, it's just showing unconditional kindness. You know, I'm not sure, maybe Parker, you have your t-shirt on to, today. He has this t-shirt that, I just love it. It just says, be kind. Just be kind, I love that shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being an ally, yeah, it's being kind. It's about being an open-minded listener. Being willing to be a friend being willing to talk, absolutely treating everyone with dignity and respect. Being an ally, yeah, it means doing our own personal work and confronting our unconscious bias, mm -hmm. our prejudice. We can recognize even our mistakes that we've made in the past, but we don't kick ourselves. Here's the point. We don't give up on changing to being the truth of who we are, right? We don't give up, because as we live our truth, we honor the truth of others. And we commit to our personal growth. That's why we're here on Sundays, right? We're yes. committing to our personal growth. So being an ally, honestly, is just being a good human being. Being kind to yourself, being kind to others. And can I, can I offer that um, back to the LGBTQ plus community? Yeah about being kind to yourself. One of the things that we do teach here and want to focus on is that we are all first and eternally a spiritual being. Every single one of us, a spiritual being. And not only spiritual being, but the beingness of God expressing uniquely as you. Where would we be without you? We talked about the colors when our discussion about where would we be without blue, blue orange, yeah. Where would we be without you on this planet? And this is an opportunity for you, too, to take within your own heart that you are perfect and whole as you are, that you are the love of God expressing, and you are loved by that love of God continually. There's nothing you need to do to fix or change, but to just simply be who you are, because God has chosen to be you. So let it shine, my friend. Let it shine. It has been said... It has been said that being an ally is a verb. It's a oh, verb. Yeah. It's something that you do. It's something that you be. And being an ally as a verb also means that if you're in the company of other people who maybe are not being so kind, to speak up. And yes. that's not an easy thing to do. And um, it, it's good to challenge ourselves, though, and actually speak up when others aren't being as kind. Yes. And speaking to both of that, I just, it's hard not to get emotional right now. Huh. Okay, thank you. Permission. <laughs> got permission. It's hard not to get emotional because you were talking about, I mean, accepting and loving ourselves. How hard is that? How hard is that? Mm -hmm. When you've been encountering people, even your own family, who don't see you for who you are, who don't love you for who you are. My goodness. My goodness. So it's important what we are doing, even here this morning. Okay? Understanding, yes, we want to be kind to ourselves. We're always learning that. Mm -hmm. But my goodness, be kind to others. Because you don't know. You don't know. We don't know. What people have experienced. And when they walk through these doors, my friends, or they walk into your presence, and they experience... Pure love, oh my goodness, that is life changing. Do not, I, I'm getting preachy here. You I'm go, sorry. girl. Don't, don't minimize the power of you being the love that you are. Please don't. Please, please don't. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me just um, be present. I 
trying, I'm in my place of decision making here. So I'm just, first of all, let me cut to some information and then we're gonna come back one more time, okay? All right, so um, up here on the screen, I want anyone who's watching online especially uh, to be able to access resources when you need them. And one of those is a booklet that Unity puts out. And it, I love its title, it's Worthy. Speaking yes. of what you just said, yes. Worthy. So it's uh, written by the LGBTQ community and um, it's an opportunity for all of us to read and understand the worthiness of each one of us. So it's available for free as a download if you go to unity.org. Or if you go there uh, and just look under the, I think the homepage heading is uh, look at all topics and you're looking for books, books and products. Um, so you can actually download the Worthy booklet for free or you can order it like this version for maybe a dollar or two online. So that's available. Also, Unity in Naperville has a second website, unitycommunityconnect.com. There's a bunch of channels in there and the one you're looking for is um, Safe Hearts Channel, where you will find all kinds of resources that support the LGBTQ community. Scroll all the way down, because we also use that uh, to educate about racism and creating uh, more um, celebration and respect for African American community as well. So check it out, scroll down, and, and get a, a look-see as to where you can access more information about what we talked about here today. And then thirdly, hrc.org. hrc.org is the Human Rights Campaign, and it is very educational, lots of information about so, um, supporting the community or being part of the community and what you might need there. So, and a um, reminder that they can go to naperpride.org yes. as well. Naperpride.org. Right? Thank you. Um, anything you guys want to say in closing? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> we, we can't experience this wonderful day. I am so grateful to have this opportunity to be up here and speak. But when you speak of being an ally, um, there's one other thing that I wanted to say, and that is sometimes for people like myself who have lived in those 50 years and who is used to very used to hiding, it is um, very, sometimes a little difficult to be out. <laughs> sometimes it's a little different. So you have to realize that no matter what somebody's showing from the outside or what, you know, be kind but be be tender with people's hearts because we don't always know. Um, and it has said in the ally information that look, look up your own information, do your own research. Don't expect someone to educate you, you know, in, in the community. Look, look it up. It's really there's a wealth of information. I enjoyed doing the service and looking up the history myself. It brought back a lot of feelings, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. Yeah. And so, most importantly, what I want to say is. I am so grateful for each and every one of you, for your hearts, for being able to be here, uh, to, to express in this community, to feel welcomed, to feel your open arms, and to feel your open hearts. It's beyond expression, it really is, of my gratitude for what it means, and for Rev Kitty, and for the openness in this community, and what it means to me to be able to be here and express. Thank you, Carol, and I, I'm gonna, double down on that gratitude piece with you. I'm gonna double down on it. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for our community. I really am. You know, everyone has a story, gay or straight. I get that. But I do know that part of my story was being invited to not be part of a particular spiritual community when I came out. And so I didn't go So I didn't go anywhere for like 10 years. And finally, I was led here to Unity Naperville. And I just remember feeling, as I walked through the doors, love, love, and warmth. And I knew I was exactly where I needed to be. And I'm still here. <laughs> Thank God. Because this is exactly where I need to be. Spirit said, you will find, go find community, because this is part of your healing. And I'm like fighting it. I'm like, no, I was burnt. And so there are part of the LGBTQ 
They're burned. They don't want to hear about your church. They don't want to hear about your religion. But boy, the change and the difference that we can make when we love people who walk through that door. You loved me when I walked through that door. And I am not the same. We will love everyone who walks through that door and they will not be the same. And I am grateful for that. I'm grateful for you, Reverend Kitty. Love you too. I'm grateful for you, Carol, each and every one of you because you make a difference. I know my heart is safe here. And boy, I have a deep desire that other people would know. Yes. Other people would know that their heart is safe here as well. So thank you so much. Yeah. Can we give some love to Carol and Kim Char for their help today? Thank you both. Thank you. I'm going to stay here and we'll do a little meditation. How's that? Kim and Carol were so graceful in what they shared with you. They exude grace and they're a big part of my heart, big part of my heart. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily make it easy for them to sit here and share with you. So just thank you both so much for your willingness. And, you know, we've got, we've got work to do yet, right? We've got a ways to go yet. Thank you for being willing to be here today, to be watching online. Hopefully you're sharing this with others because there's work to do. Ah, and it always begins within, doesn't it? So let's just take some time to close our eyes and find that one place of love within you that never fails, that's always present, it's at the very center of our heart. We imagine that heart space as a doorway that's opening as we look at it in our mind's eye. Trusting that the true heart within us is the heart of God. And as that door opens gently, it is opening to that brilliant light of God. We know that light as our own being. That outside of this body, we are that light pure and perfect. And so we feel our entire body allowing that light to spread through it, to lift us up, to heal us, to soothe the hurt, Take a moment to simply see that in your mind's eye. You are a being of light, living temporarily in this human body. I am light and my nature is love. I feel that loving presence that I am. Knowing me as good and knowing all beings as that same goodness. And in my mind's eye, as I look out beyond my body and imagine the beings in this room, also beings of light, that as I send my love in their direction, my vision becomes a prism of color and vibrancy. And suddenly we each become our own unique color of light.
and that vision extends beyond this room out into all humankind. We imagine seven plus billion people around the world expressing as light, but not just light, their own unique, brilliant expression of color, of vibrancy, of talent, of beauty. Our heart is open to every one of those facets of the prism that are shining their own unique light and being their own unique self. We're sending love to them and receiving love from them. We have bypassed the ego now and we are simply God seeing, being, loving. We take a deep breath of color. We feel and taste that rainbow within us as joy, as beauty, as gratitude. And know that this variety, this creativity is always present. We allow this moment in time to become a time to renew our commitment to love and allow. Even allow ourselves to be the truth of who we are, knowing that this power of love is working together for our good as we celebrate the truth that we are. So it is, and amen. <laughs>